Good morning and welcome to today's episode of Word Bites. My name is Abide Miwato and uh, today we're going to be looking at 1 Timothy chapter 6 and uh, verses 3 to 21. So as we know, in, um, in this program we read the Bible and then we study the Bible as much as time permits. Okay, so let's read the Bible. Get your Bible out your printed Bible, your Bible app, with your phone on silent. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So 1 Timothy 6, 3 to 21. Here we go. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not agree to sound instruction of our Lord Jesus Christ and to godly teaching, they are conceited and un understand nothing. They have an unhealthy interest in controversies and quarrels about words that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction between people of corrupt mind who have been robbed of the truth and who think that godliness is a means to financial gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Jesus Christ, who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession. I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see. To him be honor and might forever. Amen. Command those who are rich in, the, in this present world not to be arrogant, not to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may hold, they may take hold of the life that is truly life. Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter and the opposing ideas of what is falsely called knowledge, which some have professed and in so doing have departed from the faith. Grace be with you all. Amen. So this is the last segment of our letter, the first Timothy that we're looking at. And it begins by um, referring really to what had been discussed in the previous uh, segment that we treated, which was the one we treated yesterday, uh, where he was talking about, you know, the lifestyle of honor, lifestyle of honor and how, um, you know, we're supposed to relate to one another in the body of Christ, the kingdom of God. So uh, it begins by saying, um, you know, those who oppose these ideas of honoring those who are older, um, male and female, of, of slaves honoring their masters, you know, this culture of honor, that those who, are, who oppose it, you know, begins to say that, you know, um, they are corrupt in their minds. They are robbed of the truth. And uh, they think godliness is uh, for financial gain. So this happens to be a very great issue in, in that uh, 
church, the church of Ephesus, where Timothy was based. Uh, because Ephesus was a, a great commercial center. So obviously, <laughs> you know, there's a temptation to run after money and to be rich and so on and so forth to the detriment of um, their faith, of pursuing righteousness. And this is why Paul in this letter uh, said to them in verse 11 to him, to Timothy, which obviously he was meant to uh, pass it on, to say that, you know, you should pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness, you know, to be free from the love of money. Because some have, you know, because of their love for money, they have, um, they've been lost basically, you know, they've pursued money rather than pursuing God, you know, because God is our source, is a great source, you know, when we acknowledge him as our source, then we have access as his children to the provision. But when we leave the source and pursue the provision, then we are entering into dangerous grounds because Jesus said, you cannot serve God and mammon, okay? And your heart is what God wants, all right? If your heart is on something else, that something else has taken the place of God. So if somebody, for instance, is running after money, you know, just money, 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 wealth, 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 without any reference to God, without any acknowledgement of God, without pursuing, you know, all these different virtues, you know, that are mentioned here, that means that they have replaced uh, God with mammon. That is the spirit of money. Okay. So uh, that's the, that's how, where he started from. And then he goes on to mention certain, you know, um, like I've mentioned before, the love of money is the root of all evil. Okay. And from the example he gave, some of them have already gone in that direction and they've lost their faith. They are, they are destroyed. Basically their faith is destroyed. Okay, so he's warning against that. Then he mentions something in verse 6 that talks about how godliness and contentment is great gain. Okay, godliness and contentment. We, we dealt with godliness a few days ago uh, where we said, you know, we need to train to be godly. You know, and that uh, godliness, you know, has value for all things, all things, you know, spiritual, emotional, mental, physical you know, material, uh, social, godliness influences and affects all these different areas. And in training to be godly, we're talking about you know, spending time in prayer, pursuing God, you know, meditating on the word of God and living the word of God, not just meditating on it, but living it, you know, living by faith. You know, that was compared to physical training, which we know has a lot of benefit for you physically and, you know, uh, mentally. But here, He's saying that, you know, um, when you pursue godliness and you are content with what you have physically, all right, then it becomes great gain. You know, contentment doesn't mean that you, you don't aspire to have more. It's just like Paul said in one uh, letter, he says, I have learned both to abound and to abase, which means that, you know, irrespective of your situation, whether you have finances in your pocket, I'm talking about naturally now, or you don't, it's not a case of, oh, woe is me, I don't have any money. No, it's not woe for you at all. Because if God is your source, the Bible says that he, 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 he supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So once we have that confidence that he's our source, and we know that he has already made provision, the Bible says that he, 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 he gives us all things, that pertains to life and to godliness. The provision has already been made. So you are not anxious. You are not, oh, how will I get what I will eat? How will I, da, 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 da. Jesus said, don't think about tomorrow. Today has enough for <laughs> troubles for itself. Okay, focus on today. Believe God for tomorrow. Okay, so contentment doesn't mean we don't aspire for more. But all it means is that we are not in a situation whereby if, the more is not here now, then it's like we're lost. We're pursuing it. It's the only thing. We're not content. That's what it means. Okay, you're content with whatever you have now. But you believe God for tomorrow for more because he always has more for us anyway. Okay, so that's what contentment is. So when you're godly and you're content, you know, in any situation that you're in, 
it's great gain because it's great peace in your heart. And it shows faith as well, trust in God. You know, without faith, it's impossible to please God, right? So it's great gain. You're not wearing yourself out <laughs> trying to make money, okay? All right, so uh, it's great gain. And then finally it talks about how those who are rich, now I'm talking about physical riches because we know we're all rich spiritually. Um, our father is the possessor of heaven and of earth. The silver, the gold, and the cattle, the thousand hills belongs to him. So when we need it, it comes, okay? And if we prove ourselves in the kingdom, in, in kingdom economics, as a worthy stewards, he loads us with quite a lot because we can be sure that, you know, uh, we'll be, we'll make it available for his purposes. All right. So those who are already in that state of being rich uh, physically, the Bible says that they should put their hope in God and not in the money. This is very important. When they asked Jesus Christ, you know, um, when somebody came to Jesus, remember that young rich ruler and says, well, Master, what can I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus said to him, go and sell all that you have, give it to the poor and come and follow me. And the guy was sad, the Bible says, and he turned, he turned away sad. And Jesus said, it is difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. It's like uh, a camel entering the eye of the needle. You know, this is because the temptation is there for the rich to put their trust in their riches. That, oh, well, I have money so I can get by. But <laughs> there's a situation whereby money, money is not sufficient because money fails. All right? Money fails. But we have money. God sends us, gives us money for his purposes. So we don't put our trust in that money. We put our trust in him. Because whatever happens, you know, there might be a crash here today or crash there tomorrow. It's not the end of us. Because our source is not subject to earthly crashes. <sighs> Glory to God. I'm getting excited. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So <laughs> those who are rich, you know, are supposed to put their hope in God, not in the money. They're supposed to be involved in good deeds good deeds we mentioned about you know good deeds yesterday you know being hospitable you know uh, uh, good deeds you know um that are obvious they, they you know and he says that they should share 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 the money don't hoard it hoarding is the uh, worldly way sharing is the godly way all right so when we share we spread it that way you prove yourself to be a good steward and God brings more across your path. Hallelujah. So that's one aspect that was dealt with in, that, in this letter. The second aspect is to do with uh, our focus. Our focus. You know, It says in verse 11, Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, gentleness, and you know, be free from the opposite. Okay? Opposite of these things. Be free from the love of money. Be free from, you know, unrighteousness and so on. You know, this is the way I see it. You know, sometimes people, when they're struggling with some vice or some issue in their <laughs> conduct and their work with the Lord, issue of sin, um, they get to a place where they really want to live right, okay? And then they're more or less like running away from that sin. Oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. But you see, that's the opposite way because... That is fear propelled, all right? And we know that, you know, fear uh, is a gateway for the enemy. And it's not uncommon that the way you are running after it, you end up falling into it, okay? But this is the principle. If you pursue the opposite of what you don't want, okay, you get engrossed in that opposite that you are pursuing, so much so that you have no time for what you're running away from, Okay? Your mind is not taken up by what you're running away from, but your mind is taken up by that which you are pursuing. And this is what the Bible says here. Pursue righteousness. Pursue godliness. Pursue faith. Pursue love, endurance, and gentleness. And when you pursue that, you, in that pursuit, you're you are taken up by it. So, so you don't have time for ungodliness. <laughs> you don't have time for doubt, for fear. You don't have time for hate. You don't have time for... Uh, unrighteousness okay so that is the key the bible says awake unto righteousness and sin not that is a principle that we need to live by when we become conscious and we have a revelation of our righteousness 
of who we are in Christ Jesus, the low level stuff breaks off from us. The power of it is broken, basically, because these are opposing forces. Okay, the Bible says the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus makes me free from the law of sin and death. It breaks off its power off of me. So this is a very great principle that pursue righteousness and you will sin not. All right. Uh, then it talks about how this is actually the topic of today's uh, word by, which is stretching quite a bit. <laughs> it talks about how we need to fight the good fight of faith. Okay. And lay hold on eternal life. Now, a fight means that there is something that is, there's a struggle there. If you're fighting the good fight of faith, by the way, a good fight is one that you win. In fact, in this fight that we're in, we're not fighting to win. We've already won. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Jesus has already won the bat uh, battle for us. He's already given us the victory. We are just in it to take our stand and to enforce that victory that Christ has given unto us. Okay. So when you're fighting, that means there's a struggle. There's an opposing force. There's something struggling with you. And then you are fighting for the thing that you want. I mean, it, it's like the next level really to pursuing something you're pursuing righteousness and now you're fighting for it you know and you're fighting a good fight of faith to lay hold on that on, on uh, eternal life and all that are you know means for us okay redemption healing wholeness soundness safety deliverance all that that represents we lay hold on it we fight and refuse to let the enemy <clears throat> Take this from us. That's why it's a fight. Okay. And then finally in verse 20 it says, God, you know, this is all still involved. These words still show <clears throat> a certain level of you know, fight, holding on to something, refusing to let go. Okay. It says, God, what has been entrusted into your care. When you're guarding something, you're 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 keeping it safe. So that uh, the enemy does not want, the, the thief does not get hold of it. All right. The Bible says that guard your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life. All right. So guard what has been entrusted into your care. What was it? Uh, Timothy has been entrusted with the care of the Ephesian church. Now he's been given all these instructions. Now he finally is being told to guard it. So that the enemy will not come and... Uh, destroy what God has committed into his hands so I can make a success of it. Amen. Hallelujah. So that, that's the word bite for today. And I'm sure it's been a blessing to you. So like it, comment, share it. Um, and uh, if you watch it on our uh, YouTube channel, Summit Ministries International UK is the same. There's so many videos on in, in there. We've talked about faith, we've talked about different things. So just go in there and just watch, 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 like, comment, share subscribe and click the bell button so until tomorrow god bless you enjoy the rest of your day bye for now